Hello everyone, welcome to my channel again. So the other day I have got quite a number of requests from my students to make a video on romantic poetry. So I thought over it and I came to the realization that if I make a video on romantic poetry with special reference to daffodils, then it will not only benefit my university students, but also the students appearing for their boards, ICSC, because it's also prescribed in the ICSC curriculum. So uh, here I am and do watch the video. If you like the video, do not forget to subscribe to my channel. And also you can comment in the comment section below if you have any query or doubt regarding the content of the video. I'll try my level best to get back to you. So let's get started. Now, in order to understand daffodils or in order to, in order to understand romantic poetry, we need to understand the age in which he lived, okay? He lived in the Romantic Age. Now, what heralded the Romantic Age? In what circumstances did Wordsworth start writing Romantic poetry? All of this is quite an important uh, part of his uh, journey as a poet. Now, he was born in one of the most beautiful places of England, the Lake District. But then, though he was uh, you know, exposed to the beauties, to the myriad beauties of nature, at the same time, at a very early age, he lost his parents. First, his mother passed away, and then later, his father expired. And much later, he lost his brother, John, he had gone on a voyage on the sea and later the news reached him that John had died because the ship had been wrecked. So that was, that was quite a tragic and traumatic experience for Wordsworth. So at a very early age, Wordsworth had learned to take refuge in nature. He had learned to turn to nature for solace. He understood the importance of nature he realized that nature is a healer in many ways. And uh, perhaps because uh, he was separated from his uh, sisters and brothers, he was separated from them, especially Dorothy. Dorothy and Wordsworth were so intimately connected. Dorothy remained the best companion to Wordsworth for the rest of his life. But Wordsworth was too young to look after Dorothy after their parents died. So they were separated and they were uh, taken care of by different relatives. That also impacted Wordsworth a lot. Now, what happened was that when Wordsworth grew up and he enrolled himself at the University of Cambridge, he did not really like it. He was displeased with the monotony of the university life. Before the last semester was about to commence, he thought of taking a trip to France. He went on a trip to France, and in France at that time, a very important event was taking place. Guess what? The French Revolution. The French Revolution was one of the most significant events in history. What happened due to the result of the French Revolution, we all know that absolute monarchy collapsed. It was abolished. And the people belonging to the third estate, namely the peasants, the artisans, the traders, the professionals, all of them finally got their freedom. They were tortured, they were oppressed, they were they had innumerable and untold sufferings. But due to uh, the collapse of the monarchy, uh, France had turned into a republic. And as a result, these people got their freedom back. They got the freedom to think for themselves. And in turn, it gave them the freedom to express themselves. So Wordsworth was very much passionately involved with the revolution. He was uh, so inspired by the ideas of the French Revolution. The ideas of the French Revolution were liberty, equality, fraternity. He was so much 
related you know he was emotionally connected to the ideas of the french revolution and he supported the french revolution and he had profound faith on mankind and he had a profound faith that no matter what happens liberty and equality will be restored on humankind but guess what something very tragic happened at that time also the queen was living the queen remember mary antoinette so she was also quite insensitive according to the history books it's written that once these people had come to mary antoinette and they had told they had told her that we do not have bread to eat guess what she said in return in response she told you don't have bread so what eat cakes so insensitive but again uh, historians have written down uh, and they have commented uh, on this and many historians reject the idea they reject this notion that mary antoinette was actually very sensitive to the needs of these uh, people and she could have never said that that's a different debate now coming back to the context though he was happy with the result of the revolution but the revolution turned into a nightmare it was followed by the reign of terror the darkest event of history and whatsoever was disillusioned he was shattered and this reign of terror the entire uh, you know all the events centering uh, the french revolution uh, have been beautifully depicted in charles dickens's novel a tale of two cities remember how the novel opens it was the best of times it was the worst of times it was the season of hope it was the season of despair it was a season of wisdom it was a season of foolishness we had everything before us we had nothing before us how beautiful the lines were anyway so he was extremely disillusioned he was shattered because the very ideals of the french revolution were violated instead of uh, setting up or establishing political freedom it resulted in tyranny and the entire revolution turned into a nightmare not only for the people of france and england but to what's for himself and at that time other revolutions were taking place also like in the united states of america and great britain so he was spiritually bankrupt he had no reason he had absolutely no purpose of living so he came back to england and then a very important event takes place in england he comes in close association with samuel taylor coleridge and they jointly publish the epoch making collection of poetry the lyrical ballads in 1798 and this publication of the lyrical ballads heralded the romanticism it heralded the romantic poetry and some of the important poets of the romantic era would be uh, robert burns william wordsworth samuel taylor coleridge percy bysshe shelley john keats and lord byron they are the pioneers of romantic era and they are the pioneers of romantic movement and what do these people write about what kind of writing style did they have what were the characteristics of this era in order to understand romantic era you will have to understand the age before that it was a neo classical age the age of reason the age of enlightenment uh in the neo classical writers mostly drew their inspiration from the classical roman and greek writers whereas the romanticists uh they drew inspiration from everyday life they drew inspiration from nature on one hand these neo classicists they uh had to abide by certain set rules they had to abide by certain uh, conventions and artificial style their diction was superficial on the other hand the romantic poets uh they started writing about events of everyday life sentiments emotions love for humanity started playing a dominant role in romantic poetry 
So these romantic writers were to some extent impacted by the ideas of liberty, equality and fraternity and they thought of implementing and using those ideals in their poetry. How? By letting, uh, you know, letting loose of the various conventions and the styles that governed the age of the neoclassical era. They let go, they let go of the conventions and the rigid styles. Rather, they focused more on nature, they focused more on humanity, they focused more on love. So, on one hand, the neoclassical writers write about uh, rationality, logic, moral values, political satire. On the other hand, the romantic, no, the romantic writers write about love. Love is a universal theme in romanticism. Love for what? Love for nature. Love for humanity at large. So, William Wordsworth, uh, he started writing uh, a lot of poems which centered around nature. Specifically, uh, he's preeminently uh, known as a poet of nature. And uh, specifically the poem, The Prelude, is extremely famous. But today we'll be talking about daffodils. Okay. So in order to understand daffodils, you'll have to understand the characteristics of romanticism. These characteristics are inherently present in the poem. And Wordsworth defines poetry as the spontaneous overflow of powerful emotions recollected in tranquility. It is only when you are in solitude, it is only when you are experiencing deep emotions of sadness or happiness or joy, it is only then you can write a poem. It is only then a poetry is created. It cannot be thought of advance. It cannot be thought of beforehand. You cannot just think about it or you cannot just adhere to certain rigid rules and write the poetry based on that. It has to be spontaneous. It has to be random. And it is only when you're in a tranquil state of mind, it is only when you're on a reflective mood or state, you start writing the poem. That is what this entire definition means. Spontaneous overflow of powerful emotions. Emotions of what? Emotions of extreme joy or deep sorrow. Any sort of emotion. It is only then a poetry is produced. Now daffodils, when uh, he wrote daffodils, uh, Dorothy had written in one of her diaries that they had gone on a stroll, uh, they had gone on a walk in uh, one of the areas of the Lake District and uh, it is only then that uh, William Wordsworth witnesses this beauty of golden daffodils flashing past before his eyes. Though the reference of Dorothy is not mentioned in the poem explicitly, but that is what is being mentioned in Dorothy's diaries. Though, though Dorothy was not a poet herself, but she used to write a lot of articles and diaries. So one of her diaries was discovered where uh, she had penned down exactly what happened. So it was not that while witnessing or experiencing the beauty of the daffodils, Wordsworth had written the poem there itself. No. It was much later. The thing happened much later when he was sitting on his couch. He was, uh, you know, he was full of despair and he could not take the harsh reality of life. He wanted himself to be transported to the world of the ideal, to the world for imagination because reality was too much for him. It is only then that this memory of these golden daffodils flashes past before his eyes and his heart dances with the daffodils. How beautifully the poem ends. Well, I'll begin with the poem Daffodils, uh, but not in this video. I hope the introduction and the background uh, of the Romantic Age was of some help. You could understand that in what context or in what age did he write. Uh, I have divided this video into two parts. So in the first part of the video, I have spoken about the introduction. I've spoken about the historical background. Um, and in the second part of my video, which I have every intention of, of uploading at the earliest, uh, 
there I would be talking about, I would directly come to the poem, I would be analyzing the poem and I would be talking about the various literary devices being used in the poem. So thank you so much for watching. I hope uh, I have tried my level best to simplify the concept. So you can always go and do the research work in Albert. Albert for, the, for, for my university students, Albert is uh, one of the most recommended books. But uh, in case you can always uh, Google and do, there are plenty of uh, you know, uh, sites that provide you with a lot of information, valuable information on Romanticism and how Wordsworth was impacted by uh, the French Revolution, all of this. But I have tried to simplify the concept so that you understand it better. Uh, thank you, that's all. I'll end my lesson today. Uh, and uh, please kindly uh, subscribe to my channel. Thank you.